Um, do you guys like my outfit? It's supposed to be like circusy a little bit. I, I think you know, like, my little hat, right? I, I asked the organizers if I could like play up the theme a little bit, and unfortunately they said like no monkeys or whatever. So, damn it. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, the title of my talk: Getting uh, Django to Play with Old Friends or Foes. Um, so my name is Lynn Root. Um, I am an engineer at Red Hat. Um, as uh, Tomas said, I am uh, the leader slash founder of Pi Ladies of San Francisco. Um, if you're interested in um, starting your own Pi Ladies locally, come talk to me. Or if you like want stickers, you can talk to me too. Um, I am also um, a board member of the Python Software Foundation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> This is annoying me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so um, for Red Hat, I work on the uh, free IPA team. Um, pardon my spiel. Um, free IPA, the IPA doesn't stand for India Pale Ale, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that's beer, if, <laughs> if you don't know. <laughs> um, it actually, it stands for Identity Policy and Audit, but um, we don't really have the audit portion yet, so it's like more like alpha. <laughs> Um, so what free IPA is, a lot of people have asked me already. Um, it's a, a system like Linux identity management and that easily like hooks up to Windows Active Directory and it's like all written in Python and it's all about setting up Kerberos um, for Linux pretty easily. Um, so I, I actually work on integration. Um, I'm not an evangelist at all. I'm more like an ambassador. Um, so I integrate IPA into other open source projects like uh, right now I'm doing um, OpenShift and if you don't know, OpenShift is um, Red Hat's platform as a service, quite similar to Heroku. And you can like spin up your own platform as a service, or you can use um, Red Hat's uh, free service. And what I'm doing is just trying to leverage um, single sign-on for like a corporate environment. It's more fun than it sounds, I swear, and it, <laughs> it kind of allows me to <laughs> Allows me to bitch on Twitter a little bit. <laughs> so um, while I don't work uh, my day job with uh, Django, you can't really like take Django out of the pie lady. So um, so bear with me. Um, so what's on the playbill for my talk? Um, I'm going to talk about setting up a, cu a custom user model that's new in a Django 1.5, as well as hooking up to external authentication and external permissions. Um, I will show this slide again, but this is where the um, associated blog and slides are, so the Rogli um, slash circus. Um, does anyone have like a pointy-haired boss or client, like all about like micromanaging or like incompetence, maybe unaware? Anyone? I don't see a lot of hands, so maybe a lot of you are lucky. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> clients do count. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps your pointy-haired boss or client, you know, um, needs a web application, and it has to be internal. That's supposed to capitalize on synergy or streamline costs or like leverage assets. All those freaking buzzwords. <laughs> so, um, slight disclaimer: I am um, uh, I have a business background. I worked in finance, and so I've heard a lot of buzzwords. So I'm gonna try and create that corporate environment for you, so you can kind of get in the mood. <laughs> Um, so you want to use Postgres, and you want to use the Django default auth, but um, no, you can't. I, I love this meme. I'm sorry. I love this chip. <laughs> so uh, you have to use the corporate internal authentication, aka single sign-on. Uh, so we're trying to avoid managing separate user credentials uh, and needing to log in um, to the required uh, mission-critical synergy application. <laughs> So, um, not to despair, my fellow Django knots, um, you can leverage um, Django's new custom user models. And so, a quick overview of the problem: you want to use um, the new user models with your application, you know, because you do. <laughs> and um, but you must hook up to a corporate slash internal system uh, for user authentication and um, implement single sign-on with your app. So quick overview, oh my god, what are these new user models? It's so awesome. What does it mean? <laughs> so it basically allows custom user identifiers. Um, you can use like your email address or maybe Twitter usernames or, or something else as a user identifier. And it can be longer than 30 characters. <laughs> and um, so we're going to create like a, a demo application. I'm going to call it Synergizer app for those buzzwords. <laughs> 
Um, and just for the sake of simplicity for this talk, it's just like a single Django project with a single app. Single app. So um, while you're hooking up into a predefined like a user authentication user database that will take care of the auth part um, and perhaps authorization, um, you can still define custom user models when inheriting from um, abstract user database or abstract user base with your own additions. So a little code example for you. I hope you can see that okay. Um, so you make your own custom user model that here like allows me to um, have a longer username and um, also um, adds required fields like synergy level <laughs> and is team player rather than like is admin or something like that. <laughs> And then because you um, define your own custom user model, you ha have to um, also define a user manager, which um, since we require like synergy level and um, like maybe a different username, uh, we need to define like how to create users and super users within Django. So another code example within the same models.py, I have the curb user manager, and I define create user and create super user, which um, uh, um, takes in like uh, email and synergy level and password. And so yeah, the one key part is, is defining what user and super user needs for Django. And then the uh, last bit for the um, user manager, I actually have to refer to that within um, the uh, custom user model. More plain, sorry. <laughs> um, so it's not shown here um, on, on the slide, but within my blog, uh, you also have to define other um, methods, including like get full name and get short name, and um, is active, which uh, defaults to true. So um, those are the models. Um, now we just have to like um, add some things within settings.py um, to, to make Django a team player. <laughs> so within settings, uh, you have uh, three variables that need to be set. First, um, you need to define the auth user model, which is just my synergizer app dot uh, curb user. And then, um, since we're deferring our authentication, we have to include middleware and backend, um, specifically the remote user middleware, if you can see that, and the remote user backend. And yay, Django is now a team player. <laughs> um, so if you're not familiar with um, like Kuros usernames and like uh, um, maybe Active Directory usernames, this is <laughs> this is what it looked like. Um, it's just username at like realm and the realm's capitalized, and it's kind of ugly. You can use this as a username, um, but um, and it's also it's not always like associated with the email address. It usually is. This is the same as a user's email address, but not always. So say that you just want you know the first part, the the user part of the Kerberos username. So then we should probably make Django more client-centric, I guess. <laughs> so um, I made a new um, module, it's curb5.py, and I just inherit from a remote user backend just to clean up um, the realm part. And ooh, yay, more client-centric. <laughs> And so back, um, back to settings.py, I updated the authentication backends to my own uh, re remote user backend. And so now um, Django is now a streamlining team player. I love these buzzwords. <laughs> so um, a quick important note, uh, the middleware, the, the order of the middleware is important. Uh, make sure that the remote user middleware comes after authentication middleware. And so that was, um, that's a, a quick overview. Of, of how to set Django to defer to remote user for to, to defer to web server for authentication while making uh, use of the custom user models. But now we have to like configure the server part, which is kind of a pain. And um, usually, if folks don't have a choice to um, to um, when using a web server, it's usually Apache. Um, Unfortunately, so it's kind of like the anti-buzzword, right, Apache? <laughs> so um, within this um, like demo environment, um, I'll have like Kerberos plus Apache, and Kerberos is generally, I mean generally like my IPA team or uh, like um, Active Directory or, or another Kerberos installation. So, so far we uh, set up your app to defer, or set up our app to defer um, to the web server, but now you have to configure it. Um, so you can actually just easily configure um, Apache within like your http.com file or a separate configuration file or maybe HT access within the root directory of your app. And um, so a ballpark example, I'm like peppering all these buzzwords. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so here's an example of uh, my comp file. 
Um, God, I hate how like Apache looks. I just hate the <laughs> configuration. So we have to load the um, uh, module for um, Kerberos authentication. And uh, mind you that um, basic Apache installation does not um, include um, mod auth curb, so you're just gonna have to install that separately. Um, and then just real quickly, this is where you know you would protect um, a, the portion of your site. Um, it doesn't always, you know, of course, it doesn't always have to be the base URL. Um, perhaps everyone like outside the corporate network can access it, but maybe you just want to um, block off the admin part, you know. So we have like the mod auth curb, um, mod auth, um, curb uh, module that we need. But um, the way that Kerberos works, if you're interested, it's kind of complicated, you have to enroll the host machine where your app is um, sitting in the Kerberos realm, as well as the service that is um, serving the app, so in this case, Apache. And then we have to have a key tab so that the service can actually um, um, access Kerberos and authenticate. And this always gets me. If you see me on Twitter, I'm always like, it's always showing Apache. It's always, this is always tripping me up. So make sure that Apache owns the key tab so it, um, Apache can authenticate to um, Kerberos. And back to um, the uh, configuration, you'll notice that I have the, the service name that I mentioned before, the enrolled service, which is HTTP, and then the key tab, the location of the key tab. Um, real quickly, uh, key tab is just uh, machine credentials. Like you have user credentials and then um, there's machine credentials. All right, so we set up, it's pretty easy, right? We just set up Apache for Kerberos authentication, um, but we gotta make sure that it works correctly. And we have to use like the negotiate protocol, the SPNAGO protocol. And um, in my blog post, actually, I outline how to test the setup with um, three different ways. Um, I'm sure there are other ways to test, but you can use um, curl requests or um, within your browsers. Um, but right now, I just want to look at curl because curl is like the easiest way to test to see if um, Apache can appropriately connect to Kerberos or Active Directory or what have you. Um, a quick example of using um, Kerberos in the command line. Um, the Kinet um, username is just like when you, you're authenticating locally, and it prompts you for your um, Kerberos password. And then when you actually curl, use the negotiate flag to uh, enable SP negotiate, SP nego um, for curl, and then send an empty uh, username password. So then the curl will uh, pick up the ticket cache that you got from when you um, Kinet earlier. So this, this gives you the ticket cache, and this uses it. And you know that it is correct when you have two responses. The first response is a, um, from the server is a 401, asking for um, like a negotiate token, saying like, who are you kind of thing. And then the client responds with the token, and then um, Apache will um, connect to the um, KDC, and then find you, and if you're um, in the database, or if you're correctly connected, or if you have the ticket cache, um, it'll respond with a 200. So it's pretty easy. Real quickly, the other two, um, requests actually has um, a nice Kerberos extension that you can simply test within um, like a, a Python shell, or um, within browsers. Unfortunately, browsers need a specific configuration. Um, if you're a Safari user, uh, thanks to Apple, it just works. <laughs> but, um, but you have to separate, like, separately configure uh, Firefox and Chrome and the um, uh, corporate sort of uh, um, um, Internet Explorer in order to pick up Negotiate correctly. All right, so um, we've tested to see if um, Kerberos works with our um, application. And um, I just want to real quickly go over authentication versus authorization because it bugs me when people say auth and they don't clarify what they mean. <laughs> so um, I'm sure you folks all know this. Um, there's a difference between authentication and authorization. First, of course, is who you are. And the, the second is what you can do. And so when you set up your Django app and you use remote user backend in the middleware, that doesn't automatically grab what the user is authorized to do, right? It's just authentication. Um, so you're like, well, crap, I kind of want to plug into uh, predefined permissions and see what member or group is a part of and, and whatnot. So there's actually um, 
a way to connect to um, the database in order to grab predefined permissions to bring it into Django. Um, so typically, you know, there's an LDAP instance and it, um, it holds users in groups through like the member of parameter, right? So you can bind to LDAP um, to find out what group the user is a member of, and then, and then you can define the authorization that a user uh, has like within your app logic, right? So if like a, a user is a team player or a mover and shaker, then you can define what they can do within your app. Um, there are different ways to um, approach this to um, figure out what um, a part, um, what uh, group the member is a part of. Of course, you can write your own um, backend for it to bind to LDAP, but that's like no fun, right? Um, there's a couple of libraries too. There's um, Django Auth LDAP library and the uh, Django LDAP groups library. But in a Kerberized environment, it's an approach. Um, it's a little different, and might be a little bit easier if um, if you actually just um, grab a key tab for the LDAP, like uh, for the service connecting to the LDAP, and then um, similar to Apache, you can just connect to the LDAP and and um, query like the um, LDAP just to find what the user is a member of. However, that like requires uh, the service to have like wide reach privileges, which might not be what you want. Um, within the um, IPA, the free IPA environment, um, IPA actually has you know an LDAP instance, and there, there's actually a nicer um, approach to this. Um, IPA um, sits on top of a, a service daemon that um, connects to like a, um, the IPA server, so you can run like the, the Unix command like um, get end group username, and um, you can easily find like what the user is a member of. Um, and then, I mean, that, that's a local system command, so you probably have to write like a Python wrapper within your Django app. But that's, um, that's better because it's more, permissions are more limited um, for the system. All right. So um, has anyone ever actually set up their own Kerberos environment? Yeah. Was it a pain? Yes, it's a pain, I know. So this is what FreeAPA is like awesome for. And um, so as like a barrier removal, buzzword again, barrier removal, um, I have um, on my blog, I linked to it, um, a vagrant like box setup where um, you can actually create your own staging environment to test to see if your Django app actually correctly connects to like a Kerberos KDC or LDAP and grabs permissions. So like the vagrant um, file is um, comprised of uh, two VMs. One is like the server for IPA, like the server host with Kerberos and LDAP, and the other is a client where you would run your Apache instance and like your web app just to test. So um, on like the blog, I write up how you can set that up and how you can test yourself. Whew. All right, so I went through a lot, and now like you're like the point person for this now. Like now you, you should get no, <laughs> you shouldn't all remember it, but like you should probably understand like it, it's not as hard as it seems. So what we went over is how to set up um, a, a custom user model despite having like the awful task to leverage single sign-on, and then like how to integrate the uh, synergizing app within a Kerberos, Kerberized environment, and then um, we went over how to access the uh, user information within. Uh, predefined permissions within our app. So um, I know that was kind of short, and it was a lot, but like, um, uh, you can like, go to um, my uh, link to find out more information, more detailed information. All I, want you, all I want for you to take away is like, it's really easy to set up a Kerberized environment to test, and that it, it can happen within Django. So um, with that, I know it was short, but um, does anyone have any questions or anything? 